Assalamu alaikum, children. Today, we are here to commemorate the martyrdom of our second Imam, Imam Hassan alayhi salam. He is the grandson of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the son of Imam Ali alayhi salam and Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. His titles are Al-Mujtaba, which means the Chosen One, and Al-Zaki, the Purified One. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu named him Al-Hasan to fulfill the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved him Allah and he would carry him on his shoulders. He used to say, al Hassan wal Hussein, Sayyid al-Shabaab ahl al-Jannah, which means Hassan and Hussein are the masters of the youth in paradise. He resembled Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a lot. Let's listen to a story from his childhood. Let's begin with Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Heavenly children, the intelligent boy. By Kisa Kids Publications, the bright sunshine poured into the Prophet's masjid, illuminating a hall packed with people lined in prayer. At the head of the congregation was the noble Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam uttered the final salam, raised his hands to his ears and recited Allahu Akbar as he finished leading the prayer. Then he slowly made his way towards the mimbar to address the crowd. Everyone began settling down. Minbar is a pulpit where the Imam sits to address the crowd. In a small corner near the back of the masjid, a five-year-old boy sat, intentively waiting for the speech. Even at such a young age, the boy seemed ready to pay attention. This beautiful child was none other than the Prophet's grandson, Imam Hassan alayhi salam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam began his sermon. He spoke about the verses of the Quran that had just been revealed. His loyal followers beamed, humbled to receive this valuable knowledge. In fact, they were thrilled just to be sitting before the Prophet of Islam Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. It was such an honor. The Prophet's heavenly voice brought out the beauty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's words even more. The Prophet's powerful speech echoed throughout the masjid. Everyone listened in awe. As his sermon came to an end, he recited a dua and the congregation dispersed. Some people began to leave the masjid, others patiently stood in line, waiting to shake and kiss the hand of the noble Prophet ﷺ. Little Imam Hassan السلام, slipped through the crowd and excitedly ran home as soon as the sermon ended. Imam Hassan السلام, burst through the front door of his home. His mother, Sayyidah Fatima, Salam Allahi alayha kneeled down and opened her arms as her son ran into them. She looked at the young boy affectionately, waiting to hear what he had to say. Just as he always did, he began telling his mother about all the beautiful new verses he had learned from the noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam that day. Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayha listened to him attentively and encouraged him to continue with each verse he recited. They sat together, 
talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A few hours later, when Imam Ali alayhi salam returned home, Sayyida Fatima al-Zahra salamu alayha warmly greeted her husband. Assalamu alaykum. She handed him a glass of water. Imam Ali alayhi salam lovingly replied, Wa alaykum as salam and thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and her for their water. As he rested, Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayha began to tell him about the new verses that the Prophet of Allah had spoken about. Surprised, Imam Ali salam asked, How did you know about these verses? Sayyidah Fatima Salam Allah smiled widely and said, Our son Hassan recited these beautiful verses for me. Imam Ali salam smiled in admiration of Imam Hassan. Salam. He knew that Imam Hassan salam was an intelligent child, but he wanted to hear him recite these verses with his own ears. He was amazed at how such a young child could memorize all those verses after hearing them at just one occasion. Imam Ali had an idea. If he came home early, he could hear Imam Hassan tell his mother about the Prophet's sermon. It would amuse and amaze him so much to hear this beautiful conversation between Imam Hassan and his mother. The next day, after the noble Prophet وسلم, finished leading the prayer, Imam Hassan السلام, once again nestled in a small corner in the back. After the sermon was over, Imam Hassan السلام, tried to leave the masjid quickly, but the back entrance was too crowded. Just as he had planned, Imam Ali السلام, was able to get home before him. Imam Ali salam reached the house and greeted Sayyidah Fatima sallallahu alayha. He then searched for the perfect hiding spot, a place where he could hear his son enter but remain hidden. There was a doorway with a curtain. Imam Ali salam quietly hid behind it. Soon, Imam Hassan alayhi salam entered the house and as usual, ran to hug his dear mother. Sayyida Fatima sallallahu alayha gave him a kiss on the cheek. She asked, My dear son, what did you learn from the Prophet of Allah today? Imam Hassan salam opened his mouth to speak, but something strange happened. No matter how hard he tried explaining the verses to his mother, he kept stammering over his words. Again, he tried, but it was useless. He couldn't get his words straight. What happened, my dear son? His mother asked. You come home every day and recite the verses to me so beautifully. Is something wrong? Imam Hassan salam smiled shyly. Dear mother, I feel the presence of a great and honorable person in this room. Because of his greatness, I have become tongue-tied. He looked around the house, curiously. Who could be home? He wondered. Imam Ali salam peeked out from behind the curtain and looked at his son. When the young boy saw his father, he suddenly understood. Imam Ali salam laughed heartedly. He came out from behind the curtain and lovingly hugged and kissed his son. Although he did not get to hear his son recount the verses to Sayyidah Fatima alayha, Imam Ali salam was still pleased. He was proud that his son was so passionate to learn and spread the words of the Quran. The End Thank you so much for listening. Until next time, ma salama. Imam Hassan alayhi salam started practicing imama 
after his father, Imam Ali السلام, was martyred in Kufa. He had to suffer a lot due to the problems caused by the ruler of his time. He stayed in Kufa for a few months and saw that the ruler was killing many followers of Ahlul Bayt and causing problems between Muslims. Most people who were with Imam Hassan السلام, left him to join the ruler Muawiyah because they were greedy for money. Only a few true followers were left with Imam Hassan السلام, who Muawiyah was going to kill. So in order to save their lives, Imam Hassan السلام, signed a peace treaty with him. Imam Hassan السلام, wrote conditions in the treaty which the ruler promised to fulfill. But later he broke the conditions. Our holy Imam used this opportunity to strengthen the belief of the Muslims and increase their awareness of Islam. That's right, Anna. After signing the peace treaty, Imam Hassan Ali Salam left Kufa and moved to Medina. The ruler used to find ways to kill our Imam, and on one day, he managed to convince the Imam's wife, Ja'ata bint Ashas, to poison him. Imam died on 7th Sabah due to the poison given to him by his own wife. But this was not the end of his suffering. His brother, Imam Hussein salam, took his body to the grave of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to be buried next to his grandfather. But the enemies shot arrows at him. It is said that he had many arrows which were removed from his body and he was then taken to Jannah al-Baqi for burial. <laughs> Let's listen to our Latmiya to give condolence to the Imam of our time, Imam al Mahdi. Oh my Imam Hassan al Mujtaba, what happened to your cobs in Malina? Oh my Imam Hassan al Mujtaba, what happened to your cobs in Malina?